All right, let's look at some examples from section 2.2. I'm looking at uh, problem 30 on page 177, where we're given the polynomial f of x being defined as 2 times x plus 3 squared times x plus 1 times x minus 6. So in the first part of this, they ask us to find the zeros or intercepts of the polynomial and state their multiplicities. So we need the x-intercepts and their multiplicities. So to find x-intercepts, we set y or f of x equal to 0 and solve for x. Well in this case we've got a product of a bunch of things being zero. So this means that one of these things has got to be zero. Well it's obviously not two. Two isn't equal to zero. So one of these other three factors has to be zero. It has to be the case that either x plus three squared is zero or x plus one could be zero or x minus 6 could be 0. Well, if we start with the left one first, taking square roots of both sides, even though it's not going to make a difference, I'll go ahead and add the obligatory plus or minus from taking square roots of both sides. But square root of 0 is 0, and positive 0 and negative 0 are the same thing. So this is just x plus 3 equals 0. So that's x equals minus 3. That's our first x-intercept. The other two are fairly simple. Here we just subtract 1 from both sides, and in the third equation we're going to uh, add 6 to both sides. Now for the multiplicities. Go back up and look at what spawned each equation and then look at the exponent on that factor. So from 6, that came from this step, and x minus 6 equals 0 came from here. I don't see an exponent, so that means the exponent must be 1, and we're just being lazy and not writing 1 down. So this has a multiplicity of 1. x equals 6 has a multiplicity of 1. Now for the multiplicity of minus 1. Go back, that came from here, no exponent, it must be 1, as with the 6, and the exponent is the multiplicity. Now we do it with the minus 3. Take our steps back, our exponent is 2. So the multiplicity of minus 3 is 2. So that's our answer for part A, that we have an x-intercept at 6 with multiplicity 1, at minus 1 with multiplicity 1, and at minus 3 with multiplicity 2. Now for part B. B asks us to relate this information to the graph. How are these intercepts going to look on the graph? Are they going to cross or touch but not cross? And that all has to do with even or odd multiplicity. Remember that an even multiplicity means that the graph will only touch the x-axis at that point. It won't cross it. But an odd multiplicity will end up crossing the x-axis at this point. So, at x equals minus 3, the graph will only touch the x-axis because its multiplicity 2 is even. So even multiplicity, it just touches. At 
x equals minus 1, the graph will cross the x-axis. Because the multiplicity of minus 1 is 1, and that's odd. So an odd multiplicity crosses. And then finally, at x equals 6, again, the graph will cross the x-axis. So that's our answer for part B. For part C, we're asked to find what would the maximum number of turning points be for this polynomial. And I'll just abbreviate turning points as TP. So the maximum number of turning points, that's related to the degree. So we need to find the degree of this polynomial in order to answer the question. And the degree of the polynomial, it's not in the right form. It's not multiplied out. It's factored. To easily find the degree, we'd have to have it multiplied out. But the other way we can find the degree is by going through and adding up all the multiplicities. By adding all these up, we get the degree just in another way. So this has degree 4, which means the maximum number of turning points is the degree minus 1. You can't have any more turning points than, in this case, 3. This is the degree minus 1. That's where that 4 is coming from. So the maximum number of turning points is 4 minus 1, which we got by taking the degree 4 and subtracting 1. So this can have three turning points at most. It could have two, it could have one, or it could even have zero turning points. But it can't have any more turning points than three. So let's take a look at something like, say, 32 next. Now 32 isn't in the nice form of being fully factored, but I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. So we have x cubed minus 6x squared plus 8x as our polynomial. Well, each term has an x in it. So the first thing I'm going to do to factor this is to pull out an x out of all three terms. And that'll leave me with x squared minus 6x plus 8. Then I have a quadratic. So factoring a quadratic with a leading coefficient of 1, two numbers that multiply to 8 and add to minus 6 sounds like minus 2 and minus 4. So if I have x minus 2 times x minus 4, then minus 2 times minus 4 is a positive 8, minus 4x plus minus 2x is a minus 6, and x times x is x squared. So this will work out. So this is a fully factored form, and we need this to answer part A about the x-intercepts with multiplicities. So to find x-intercepts, we start off by setting y, or f of x, equal to 0. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to use the factored form. I use the factored form because that's what enables me to break this up into three separate equations. Now, I can't do that in this form alone. I have to use, I have to get to the factored form so that I can say, well, either x equals 0 or 
x minus 2 equals 0 or x minus 4 equals 0. And all these are fairly easy. This one's done. x equals 0 is already done. Here, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. And in the next one, it's 4 to both sides. But I also wanted multiplicity. So, I trace my way back up and look for the exponent on the corresponding factor that spawned the equation. But here, I don't see an exponent. Well, that means the exponent is 1, because anything to the first power is just itself. So this has multiplicity 1, x equals 2, stepping this back, also has multiplicity 1, nothing was there, so it means it's 1, and 4, same thing. Stepping this back, no exponent, that means multiplicity 1. So each x-intercept here has multiplicity 1. 0, 2, and 4, all of them have multiplicity 1. For part b, whether these cross or touch, that deals with whether these are even or odd. But they're all, the the, whether the multiplicities are even or odd. And the multiplicities are all the same. They're all 1, and therefore all these multiplicities are odd. So, at each x-intercept, at x equals 0, at x equals 2, and at x equals 4, at each one of these, the graph of this polynomial is going to cross the x-axis. Because odd means crossing. Even multiplicity means touching. And then for part C, yeah, and that's our answer for B. Forgot to box that in. There we go. C, to find the maximum number of turning points, we need the degree. Now, you can do this by adding up all the multiplicities. So it would be 1 plus 1 plus 1 or 3. But if you look back at the original problem, they gave it in this very nice form where the degree is the highest power of x. 1, here the power is 2, here the power is 3. So of course the degree is 3. We didn't need to go this route. We could have gone the highest power of x route to get the degree. But it doesn't really matter, because they're both very simple to do. So, either way, you're going to get 3 as the degree. So, the maximum number of turning points is just 1 less than the degree. So, it's 3 minus 1. Or 2. So, at most, this polynomial will have 2 turning points.